ಸಹಗಣಾರಘುನಾಥಾನ್ವಿತೀವ ಸಾಧ್ವೈತ ಸಾವದೂತ ಪರಿಜನ ಸಹಿತ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ದೇವ ಶ್ರೀರಾಧಾಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪಾದ ಸಹ ಗಣಾಲಲಿತ್ರೀ ವಿಶಾಖಾನ್ವಿತ್ತ ನಮ ಓಂ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪಾದ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರೇಷ್ಟಾ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ನಾಮಿನೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸಾರಸ್ವತಿ ದೇವೆ ಗೌರವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಣೆ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯ ದೇಶ ತಾರಿಣೆ ನಮೋ ಮಹಾವದನ್ಯಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರೇಮ ಪ್ರದಾಯತೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ನಾಮನೆ ಗೌರತುಷೇ ನಮಃ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕರುಣಾ ಸಿಂಧು ದೀನಬಂಧೋ ಜಗತ್ಪತೆ ಗೋಪೇಶ ಗೋಪಿಕಾಕಾಂತ ರಾಧಾಕಾಂತ ನಮೋಸ್ತುತೆ ತಪ್ತ ಕಾಂಚನ ಗೌರಾಂಗಿ ರಾಧೆ ವೃಂದಾವನೇಶ್ವರಿ ವೃಷಭಾನು ಸುತೆ ದೇವಿ ಪ್ರಣಮಾಮಿ ಹರಿ ಪ್ರಿಯೇ ವಾಂಚಾ ಕಲ್ಪತರೂಭ್ಯ ಕೃಪಾ ಸಿಂಧೋಭ್ಯ ಪತಿ ಪಾವನೆಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸಾದಿ ಗೌರ ಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಡಿಯರ್ ಡಿವೋಟೀಸ್ requesting all the wonderful devotees to kindly turn on your videos because today your videos are going to give me strength my health is not good it's very bad i thought of telling sakshi chukru but then my lord you all think are kaisa teacher mil gaya <laughs> class hi nahi leta so i said better let me come bishma dev arrows at pierced him and he's going to speak my pain is not so much but anyways i'll need en- encouragement from all you vaishnavas by turning on your videos and uh, any quick pointers from last class i know it was a long time ago but i am sure you all are sincere students you would have definitely revised something that you remember from last class something that helped you in your krishna consciousness some point that you liked you appreciated i think guruji we can uh, uh, keep krishna in our heart if we have two things with us if we hear shrimad bhagavatam in a reverential mood and if we have uh, if we hear shrimad bhagavatam in a pleasing manner yes pleasing in manner reverential mood krishna is captured ajita jito apitaisti lokyam krishna is captured rightfully in your heart very nice anyone else uh, rushis have qualities we discuss about qualities of rushis the three qualities yes, you are yes, we discuss the qualities of rishis rishis are those who are concerned they're convinced and they're compassionate very good anyone else two three more points yes yes those of you who were there in the last class you can definitely give it a shot ah yes prabhu shobha lakshmi mata ji the sufferings of kam pandavas are only due to science and not due to their karma yes the suffering of pandavas was not due to karma but it is because of time and this time is controlled by krishna yes and we understood the principle just as a uh, mother in law teaches the daughter in law through her daughter yes so the devotee is like the daughter the supreme lord is mother in law and uh, we conditioned souls jeevatmas are like the daughter in law so we learn we learn through their examples okay very nice one any one last point
Hare Krishna. Yes, yes, Prabhu. All, all, uh, all can happen. Uh, willing of law, Lord. Yes, that was a whole sum and substance. How Krishna is orchestrating everything. So basically, everything happens by the will of Lord. Yes, Yudhishthir Maharaj getting bewildered, will of Lord. Krishna not able to convince Yudhishthir Maharaj, will of Lord. Vyasdev not able to convince, will of Lord. Bhishma able to convince, will of Lord. So everything is will. And some more will of Lord you are going to see today. Okay. So let's uh, just see what we discussed last time. So we had two themes mainly. The first one was how Pandavas and sages assembled at Bhishma Dev's deathbed. And we saw the different descriptions. How, what all great souls had assembled. We saw that. And then Bhishma, how he pacifies Yudhishthir. So we had seen this much. So now we'll begin from 18th. And we'll go on till 32. We'll not take 34. 30, 31, 32 we'll complete. Okay. So what are we going to see today? We will see Bhishma speaking about Krishna's supreme position. Yes. He will talk about Krishna's supreme position number one and number two Bhishma Dev will instruct Yudhishthira Maharaj about different dharmas and then he prepares to leave the world okay so let us begin Srimad Bhagavatam just one minute yeah <clears throat> Canto 1 chapter 9 entitled the passing away of Bhishma Dev in the presence of Lord Krishna text number 18 let's try to Complete till 32. Okay. Now this is uh, the very important shloka which comes because this is going to explain Krishna Tattva. Nishma Dev is going to explain the Krishna Tattva. Esha Vai Bhagavan Sakshat Adyo Narayana Puman Mohayan Maya Lokam Ghudas Charati Vrishnishu This Shri Krishna is none other than the inconceivable original personality of Godhead. He is the first Narayan, the supreme enjoyer. But by bewildering us with his self-created energy, he is moving Vrishni, just like one of us. Yes. So this is a very important shloka for uh, Gaudiya Vaishnavas. Because here Bhishma Dev is clearly telling that Krishna is the source of Narayan. <laughs> Krishna Vai Bhagavan Saksha. He is Sakshad Bhagavan. Adyo Narayana. Which means he is the original Narayana. Yes, the original Narayana. Yes. So there are different meanings of Narayana. Narayana means one who lies down in the water. Yes, he aspires from his body and he lies down in water. He is called Narayana. Another meaning of Narayan is one who is uh, unto whom all the Naras have taken shelter. All the different Naras have taken shelter of that personality is called as Narayan. That's another meaning. Like that, there are so many meanings for Narayan. But who is the original? That original person is Govind Namadi Purusham Tamaham Bajami. That is Krishna. He is looking at Krishna and telling. Mohayan Mayayam Lokam. See, he is bewildering everybody by, through his Maya. And Guda. Guda Tarati Vishnishu. Guda means a very um, secretive, a very confidential. Good, good rahasya. We say, na? inconceivable actually. Charati Vrishnishu. And he, he just, uh, if you just look at him, he appears to be one among us. But he is not so. He is clarifying. He is not so. Correct? So this was what Bhishma Dev is saying. Let's see the purpose of Prabhupada. One minute. Yes. So here, uh, Srila Prabhupada in his purport, he writes about accepting Vedic authority. Yes. Bhishma Dev, what all he is speaking? He is speaking from the Vedic authority. Evam Tampara Praptam Imam Rajarishya Vidhu. He is not speculating anything. So Bhishma Dev, whatever he has studied in Shastras, Bhishma Dev, whatever he has realized through the process of Bhakti, that is something that he is presenting here. Prabhupada says that. And not just Bhishma Dev. Now, if you see in the 10th chapter, even Arjuna says the same thing. Param Brahma, Param Dhamma, Pavitram, Paramam Bhavan, Purusham, Shashwatam, Divyam, Adi Deva Majam Vibhum. We all would have studied in Bhakti Shastri. 
that how arjuna says yes you are param brahma you are param dhama you are the supreme abode you are the supreme transcendental person pavitram you are the supremely pure paramam bhavan you are the supreme person whoever who whoever can be yes pavitram paramam bhavan purusham shashvatam divyam and you are the transcendental personality the divine personality adi devam ajam vibhum you are unborn you are great so all these things and that arjuna immediately after that he quotes authorities it's not just me now one may say arjuna is promoting his friend best friend so he is promoting right then arjuna immediately says ahustvam rishayas sarve devarshi nardastada asito devalo vyasa swayam jaiva bravishi see very immediately he quotes all authorities right immediately he quotes and vishmadev is also quoting from authority that's what uh, prabhupad writes correct um uh, ropa writes in the purport if you see this for example modern spacecraft fly in the sky yeah fly in the sky and when scientists say that they travel to other side of the moon men believe these stories blindly because they have accepted the modern scientists as authorities the authorities speak and the people in general believe them but in case of vedic truths they have been taught not to believe even if they accept them they give a different interpretation each and every man wants a direct perception of vedic knowledge otherwise he foolishly refuses to accept it this means that the misguided man can believe one authority the scientist but will reject the authority of the vedas the result is that people have degenerated yes this is the main thing that has happened in the vedic time the authorities were the vedas in the modern time the scientists became the authority and the post modern times where we are living experience becomes the authority so people don't care what scientists say people don't care what vedas say people are simply bothered over what experience i get mujhe acha lag gaya bas fir koi problem nahi if i like it i'll i'll follow i will do whatever i want so i like it so that experience becomes the authority today that is a post modern era but the main reason why people have degraded in this age is they have decried vedas the vedic authority is finished that is why so prabhupad writes one more place where now he gives all evidences together where krishna is the original personality of god it brahma ji also says this in after brahma bhumi one leela narayanastvam nahi sarva dehi nam atmasya dishta kila loka sakshi narayanam narabhujalayana So, so what is the first thing that Brahma Ji asks? Narayana Swam, Nahi Sir, you are Narayan, right? That's what he asks Krishna. So Krishna is a small boy standing there. He says, No, I am a cowherd boy. No, 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 no. Atma Asi Adhisa Kila Loka Sakshi. You are the supreme witness in everybody's uh, heart, right? You are that person. I know it. Narayano Angam. See, Narayana is your Part and parcel. Anga means part. If you see the shastras, there are different different uh, terminologies used. There is something called anga. There is something called as amsha. There is something called as amsha amsha. There is something called amsha kala. All these are different. I'll give you an analogy of our own body, right? So if Krishna is the whole body, right? Anga means one limb, like hand, leg, head. that's called anga so narayana is anga of krishna then what is amsha amsha is a part of body just like for example a finger of the hand one finger that is amsha then what is amsha 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 is the nail then what is amsha kala amsha kala is a part of the nail so there are different different potencies even in the supreme lord this we study in the chaitanya charitamrita very deeply it is explained by krishna das kaviraj goswami what is the difference between um, the purna bhagwan the anga the amsha the amsha amsha the amsha kala right so krishna is that original person that that's something that bhishma dev is trying to establish here now how does he bewilder yes his bewilderment that he does yes the bewilder uh, the bewilderment that he does is he pretends to be a, an ordinary human being that's how he builds so even in krishna's time there many so many people saw krishna 
नाउ डेज पीपल से दैट ओ एक बार भगवान दिख जाते कितना अच्छा रहता वी जस्ट वांट टू सी गॉड वंस एंड वी विल सरेंडर ओ नथिंग लाइक दैट हैपेंड इन कृष्णास टाइम आल्सो हार्डली फ्यू पीपल अंडरस्टूड द सुप्रीमेसी ऑफ कृष्णा नॉट एवरीबॉडी अंडरस्टूड राइट व्हाट इज दैट बिविल्डरिंग नेचर ऑफ कृष्णा बिविल्डरिंग नेचर ऑफ कृष्णा इज एक्सप्लेन इन द 9th चैप्टर भगवत गीता 11th श्लोक अवजानंति मा मुदा मानुषिम तरुम आश्रित परम भाव मजानंतो लोको मा मजम अप्ययम सो दैट बिविल्डरिंग नेचर ऑफ कृष्णा इज टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट अवजानंति मा मुदा मानुषिम तनु आश्रित ओ कृष्णा इज जस्ट एन ऑर्डिनरी ह्यूमन बीइंग दैट इज द बिविल्डरिंग नेचर ऑफ कृष्णास माया never understand krishna is an ordinary human being this is the major challenge that uh, one faces especially when krishna is on the planet people consider him to be an ordinary human being right now in this verse bhishma dev has uh, made a very profound statement stating krishna's position now what will bhishma do he will quote authority let's go ahead next he will quote some authority now ियली About his glories through direct contact. Yes. Through direct contact. I guess somebody has forgotten to mute the mic. Yeah. Thank you. So what is mentioned here? Asya anubhavam. Anubhav is the greater. Now we are in this verse. We are just focusing on this anubhav. Yes, the anubhav part. We'll be focusing on this word. asya anubhavam bhagavan oh his glories veda guhyatamam so this is the most confidential part of the vedas it is not very easy because vedas are very exhaustive so person can read the vedas many times but still miss the confidentiality correct miss the confidentiality like for example there was a student a boy who had come to meet me and he came and asked that uh, he came and told me that well uh, i i memorized the 700 shlokas of bhagavad gita i said it check karte thoda and jhoot bol raha hai kya so i tested and he knew all shlokas and then he asked sir question puchna hai okay krishna bhagwan kya bolte guru ki zarurat hai ya nahi i said hey you know all shlokas of gita na bolo so, pata hai then what is 4.34 tad vidhi pranipate na pari prashne na seve upadekshanti de gyanam jnani nas tattva darshane quoted what is the meaning of this Oh, meaning ki one person should approach the uh, नहीं ठीक से नहीं पता see so although person may know the content of the shastra it may not become an irrevocable truth in his heart till the time person receives kripa or mercy yes till the time that mercy doesn't dawn in heart it is not necessary that one may know these are all the great souls the mahajanas devarshi narada shiva Yes, Kapilo, Kapila. These all are the great personalities who have direct contact. Direct contact, as in they have uh, realized, they have realized the position of Krishna through their process of sadhana bhakti. Yes, they have realized the position of Krishna. There is another uh, time which comes in uh, Brahma Vyavarta Puran, where uh, Shiva tells, "Aham veti, shuko veti, vyasa veti na veti va." So Shiva tells that I know, and Shukadev also knows, and Vyasa Veti na Veti va. Vyasa knows or doesn't know, I don't know <laughs> about Krishna only the confidentiality. Actually, what had happened was <laughs> Shiva was giving Bhagavatam class to Parvati Devi, and Shiva, when a speaker goes into ecstasy, closes his eyes and gives class. <laughs> yes, and that's a great blunder that a speaker can do. closing eyes and giving class that's why i'm keeping my eyes open and i'm requesting you also please keep your videos on so he was closing and doing and parvati devi was hum after every verse he would speak she would say hmm 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 
and she dozed off in the class. And at that point of time, Shukadev Goswami comes in the form of a parrot. So he comes there in the form of parrot, and uh, he hears, and she almost her battery is about to go. Mm. 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 And she's gone now. Shukadev Goswami thinks that my lord, this is a very dangerous situation. If uh, uh, Shiva is speaking such nice katha about Krishna, if uh, he doesn't hear the hmm sound of Parvati, he will stop the katha. He will get up, and his ecstasy will be lost. What should I do? So he starts making the sound in Parvati's tone. Hmm. 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 He starts making that sound. <laughs> and then Shiva continues to speak. And at one point of time, Shiva opens his eyes. He opens his eyes and he sees my wife is nicely sleeping. <laughs> then who is making that hmm sound? So he saw that there is one parrot who is making hmm, hmm like that sound. <laughs> so he gets very upset and chases that parrot with Shuka. He enters into the a mouth of, through the mouth of Vyasadeva's wife, he enters into the womb. That's how Shuka enters the womb of uh, Vyasadeva's wife, and then he escapes. But that's why Shiva knows. Kaham veti, Shuko veti. He explained the truth to Shukadev. And Vyasa veti na veti. Vyasa may know or may not know. But anyways, the point is Bhishma Dev is quoting from authority. Now here, this word Anubhava. That is something which is. Uh, uh, the highlight here. So, I will explain about this bhav in different ways. Now, we have studied about uh, bhav bhakti in uh, the nectar of devotion. I didn't understand anything that time. Now, also, I teach, but I don't understand anything. And post to that, the next uh, Dakshini Vibhag, there are different, different bhavas explained. Satviki bhav, Yabichari bhav, Stai bhav. So, like that, there are different bhavas are explained. So, Prabhupada elaborates this based on Vishwanath Chakravarti Rathakul's uh, commentary. So, the first thing that Prabhupada says is that devotees are Buddhas. Buddhas means very intelligent. Where do we hear this word Buddha? Anyone knows? In one verse of Bhagavad Gita, it comes. Buddha Bhav Samanvita. Yes. Aham Sarvasya Prabhu. Matas Sarvam Pravartate Iti Matva Bhajante Ma Buddha. Bhava Samanvita. Bhava Samanvita. So anybody who knows the supreme position of Krishna, yes. Aham Sarvasya Prabhu. And Matta Sarvam Pravartate. Everything comes from Krishna. What happens? Iti Matta. If he has that opinion, then what he will do? He will do bhajan. What kind of bhajan he will do? Iti Matta Bhajante Ma Buddha Bhava Samanvita. With complete bhav. So Prabhupada introduces first this word bhav, Buddha. So all the pure devotees of Lord are Buddha. And who is Buddha? Buddha are those who are engaged in bhakti with the right bhavana. Yes, bhavana. If you read the Chaitanya Charitamrit, there are six tattvas explained. Yes. Vande Gurun, Isha Bhaktan, Ishan, Isha Avatarakan, Tat Prakash, Tat Shakti. Six tattvas. Yes, these are all the six forms of Lord Chaitanya. Krishna Chaitanya Sangitam. And that bhakta tattva is also explained. As per Bhakta Tattva, there are innumerable devotees. And Krishna's Kaviraj Goswami says, the leader of Bhakta, Bhakta Tattva is, try to guess, who is it? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chalo. This guessing game, nice guessing game. It's not Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Anyone else? Narad Muni. One form of Narad Muni in Chaitanya Lila. Srivast Thakur is the head of all devotees. Similarly, devotees are countless, but majorly the categorization of devotees come in the form of Mahajans. So there are 12 authorities Swayambhu, Narada Shambhu, Kumara Kapilo Manu, Pralada Janako Bhishma, Bali, Vayasakti, Vayam. Yes. So Bhishma Dev is also an authority. So he has mentioned only three in this verse. He has explained about Kapila, Narada and Shiva. He is also an authority, Vishma Dev himself. So one of the um, qualities that we see are these Mahajanas, they understand this Bhava. They have Bhava and they understand this Bhava. Yeah. So Vishwanath Chakrati Thakur, he says, yeah, Anubhav's first, first symptom of Anubhav is 
the devotee manifesting ashta satviki vikar yes and this particular ashta satviki vikar is the eight symptoms of ecstasy like perspiration by kampan trembling weeping the devotee is crying or uh, standing hair standing on its end like that yes so these uh, symptoms of ecstasy ashta satviki vikar they when the devotee engages in service of the lord this is something that really mot- the bhava motivates the devotee to serve more of course but the service should not stop what happened to daruk we hear the example of daruk daruk was fanning the lord but when he was fanning the lord he was getting tears of ecstasy but he was cursing the tears are what is this tears because of these tears i am not able to see the lord properly if i don't see the lord properly i will not be able to serve the lord properly so he is cursing those tears and removing it but the point is anubhav's first aspect is that a devotee experiences these ecstasies when he is serving the lord when he is directly engaged in service of the lord the second understanding of bhava anubhav is the relationship which is called as vritya vashyata second aspect first aspect is ashta satvik vikar the second aspect is propad rights So this particular terminology is explained in great detail uh, in the Dhamodar Lila by Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur. It's called Vritya Vashyatam. Vritya is servant, and Vashyatam means Krishna comes under the control of his servant. Vritya Vashyatam. Two examples are given here by Prabhupada. First is Yashoda Maya binding Krishna. And any one more example you all can give. Vashyatam, where Krishna became came under control of his duty. Like Arjuna, Prabhu ji, he was the chariot driver of Parthasarthi. Krishna became Parthasarthi. He came under the control of his duty. And also, if you see uh, Krishna lifting the chappal sandals of Nand Maharaj, so like that, many examples we see of Vritya Vashyatam. This is something that really charms the heart of uh, devotees. And even uh, Shukadev Goswami, four Kumaras, the like Gyanis. they get attracted by the lord this is another bhava <laughs> four kumaras they had gone to vaikuntha syara vind nayanasya padara vind kinjal ka mishra tulasi makaranda vayu antar gati svavivarena chakar pesham sankshobha makshara jusham api chitta tanmu so they had gone there and they they smelt the aroma which came from the tulsi of the supreme lord that wind when they came sankshobha makshara jusham api chitta tanmu there their uh, chitta became completely purified of that akshara buddhi that uh, impersonal tendencies they all got completely cleansed that is another bhav which he attracts uh, the this impersonalist even shukade goswami was a brahmavadi impersonalist how did he attract him aho bakiyam stana kala kutam jiggam sayaya yadapya sadvi lebe gatim natri muchitam tatonyam kamma dayalum sharanam rajema got very much attracted to uh, the wonderful quality of krishna the woodcutters in the forest they were singing this and he said come on i want to know who is this person and the woodcutters so that your father only told about this person is there in shrimad bhagavatam this is another bhava by which the impersonalist turn into pure devotees of lord the fourth bhava is when the uh, the supreme lord puts the devotees in trouble yes and when the tribulations come that time the transcendental bhava between lord and his devotees they spring up yes they spring up they can be in terms of scarcity impediments discomfort unhappiness different types of uh, these situations or they can also be in terms of krishna taking away everything from the devotee and prabhupad himself writes that's what happened to prabhupad Prabhupada's Prayag Pharmacy business got flopped. So that time Prabhupada writes, "Yasya ham manugrinna ami harishye tad dharam shani tato adhanam tadatyasya swajana dukkha dukkita." So what is it? Yasya ham anugrinna ami. My special mercy, Krishna says, is what? Harishye tad dharam shani. Shani means slowly, slowly, slowly. I take away all his wealth, and then what happens? Tato adhanam. Thus he becomes without any wealth. Chajiti asya swajana. and is all his people swajan so called his people they all uh, what happens they all leave him one by one and dukkha dukkitam 
he he faces material tribulation one after the other at this point of time he understands that this material relationships are useless they are useless i have to dedicate my life to krishna so this is the final bhav who can summarize the four bhavas that we discussed this was the heart of our uh, today's class just the hint 1 2 3 4 yes first one yes ashta satvi vikar somebody else second one brutya vashyatam very good brutya vashyatam how krishna is controlled by the love of his devotees third impersonalist becomes devotee at yes. getting attracted to devotees that's another bhava of krishna where he converts the impersonalist into pure devotees and last one lord push artha artha bhav that means the devotees are in trouble and then they take shelter of the lord yes correct artha bhav the devotee is in uh, krishna puts them into difficulty and there uh, the bhava increases the bhav prabhupad life we can see that example of how prabhupad also he, he had everything going fine but then krishna was saying that uh, this my pure devotee is stuck into material business his guru is telling him to take sanyas in the dream but he is not able to give up i think i should take away everything from him and thus placing the devotee into material troubles means delivering him from the illusory material relations so one understands i have nothing to give with this material give and take with this material world yes okay so that anubhav was the main word that propa focuses in this purport okay so now uh, first he explained what is krishna tattva 18th verse in 19th verse he quoted authorities who accept this that krishna is the supreme personality of godhead now in the 20th verse bhishma dev is telling that what blunder you have committed <laughs> how you all have been in maya out of illusion what you people have done what is the result of that illusion yam manyase matuleyam priyam mitram suhrutam akkaro ho sachivam dutam saurdad at sarthit sarathin okay that that personality whom out of ignorance only you thought to be you are maternal cousin you are very dear friend well wisher counselor messenger benefactor etc is that very personality of god at shri krishna yes so now you see these are all the different roles that krishna played in the life of pandavas matuleya matule matul means actually uh, uncle mama is matul matuleya means mama's son priyam somebody is very dear mitram so these are all the different direct relationships that the pandavas had so this you all have accepted so this is out of ignorance only you have accepted so bhishma dev is telling that how krishna's illusory energy is so strong that you all have accepted him like this but we need to understand one thing that krishna may act like propa is saying in the purport he acted as cousin brother friend albisher counselor benefactor etc but he is still the supreme personality of godhead in all circumstances that is why if you see krishna is given given the title achyuta achyuta sene or ubhayor madhye ratam stapya me achyuta that's what arjuna tells krishna he knows the position although he has accepted the position of a driver still he is achyuta he is infallible his his position is never going to change he will always be infallible sometimes what happens we uh, hear this example from his grace rabi shankar that there's a drama going on in that particular drama there is uh, a man who is playing the role of a beggar so he is begging he is going from door to door begging wanting for food khana de do paisa de do and the audience uh, seeing that they are crying tears they are uh, unable to they are all sympathizing with him and crying and later on uh, the person comes and he it's revealed that he is a great businessman tata birla somebody like that when he comes and asks his friend so how was the drama I said uh, yeah it was good but did you play a role yes i was the beggar oh you were the beggar in that drama <laughs> we, we didn't recognize you you acted so so well that's what even kunti marani says right natav natya datav 
you are uh, the best of the best stage drama actors yes you may act you are a billionaire you may act as a poor man so krishna may act as a subordinate all these positions are subordinate positions but he is the ultimate supreme personality of godhead it will be a grand delusion if you consider krishna to be a subordinate that's what uh, bhishma is warning the pandavas then what is the true position of krishna let's explain in the next verse this is not the position of krishna then what is his true position sarvatmana samadrisho hi advayasya anathankrite tatkritam mati vishamyam niravadyasya nakvachit being the absolute personality of godhead he is present in everyone's heart he is equally kind to everyone and he is free from the false ego of differentiation therefore whatever he does is free from material inability he is equibalanced oh very nice sarva atmana parmatma in everyone's heart samadrisho equal he is equally disposed to everybody advaya advaya means absolute advaya asya anahankrite he has no false ego yes tatkritam mati vishamyam so whatever is done by him he is actually his mati vishamyam his particular the kind of intelligence that he has is not very discriminative in his intelligence niravadyasya nakvachit so no he is not he doesn't have the differentiating mentality if you look at dhritarashtra he was differentiating mamaka pandava he doesn't have that yes niravadyasya is been spotless or niravadyasya means also means that he is free from any kinds of no strings attached nakvachit at any point of time so na this na is very important All right. So, Prabhupada has uh, mentioned about three things only in this purport. So many qualities are there of Krishna. So, he has spoken about uh, two things, not three, two in one sense. He describes Lord as Kaivanya, and number two, he explains very nicely what is Nirahankrite, the difference between us having false ego and Krishna not having the false ego. What is the difference that he has explained? so one thing is kaivalya so many times we say the kaivalya kaivalya may have a very impersonal connotation yes anisha kaivalya pate nirnena cha kaivalya here refers that there is nothing different from krishna keval wahi hai only he exists right that is the meaning of kaivalya in true sense that everything is krishna's energy yes. it's like we enter into a company Suppose we are entering into uh, a Mercedes-Benz company. So every product which is there—the tables, the chairs, uh, the manufacturing, uh, the steering wheels, boxes, the engines—everything contains what? Everything contains uh, Mercedes, Mercedes, Mercedes. It belongs to that. Similarly, this entire existence, Isha Vasyam Idam Sarvam. So that is the meaning of Kaivalya. Robad gives a lot of emphasis to this word Kaivalya. there is nothing in this world except krishna and he gives a very nice analogy which is mentioned in the shastras of uh, the sun correct the sun like for example just as the sun is present in one place yes and uh, the sun shine the sun shine which is pervading throughout yes throughout this entire horizon sunshine and that sunshine is something that uh, is non different from the sun so similarly this creation is non different from krishna and this is actually one of the truths of uh, the shrimad bhagavatam chatushloki am evasam eva agre nanyad yat sat asat param the first chatushloki this is the substance am evasam eva agre nanyad yat sat asat param before i existed before the creation i exist i will exist after the creation and uh, there is nothing different from me and even while the creation is going on the stithis stithi srishti stithi pralay i am a witness to all these things hmm? and uh, thus just as the sun sunshine is all pervading and the sun is the substance similarly krishna is that one person whose personality and his entire energies are all pervading The second thing Prabhupada elaborates is about nirahankrite. <laughs> He explains very sweetly. 
Niraham Krite means uh, Krishna is uh, not having false ego. Krishna sometimes is made uh, the main person, chair person of Agra Puja in uh, Ratsu Yajna of Yudhishthir Maharaj. He accepts that. And the same Ratsu Yajna, what was service of Krishna? To wash the feet of all the guests. He has no problem. <laughs> He has absolutely no problem whether to wash the feet of all the guests or to receive Agra Puja. In both the cases, he he's he's the same person. There is no 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 difference. He is not neither elated to receive the Agra Puja, neither is he disappointed. Are you mere ko aisa seva kyu de diya? Mere ko pair dhone ka seva de diya. Jante ne Bhagwan ho? No, he is not having that. You make him chariot driver. You make him. You give him the topmost worship because he doesn't have this material conception of false ego. He is equibalanced. Correct? He is equibalanced. That is Nira Hankrite. If you look at us, we are having a Hankrite. We all have some favorite services. If we are given that, we will happily do it. And there are some services we don't like. Oh, dia, hum bhaag jayenge. We don't like that. So we have favoritism. Right? So this shows that we are, have, we are, we are still having the material conception. Dualities are there <coughs> in all of us. So that duality is missing in Krishna. It's not there in Krishna. He's, that's why he's called as Advaita. So this Kaivalya and Nirahankrite, absence of false ego, and Kaivalya, Keval, Sapkuch Krishna hi hai. So that is Kaivalya, is explained by Prabhupada. Because if you understand Kaivalya, all other qualities are very automatically understood. Okay. So now, the position of Krishna was explained in the last verse. Now, such a great person, such a great person has appeared before me. That is what Bhishma is going to speak in the next verse. Yet, Yet, despite his being equally kind to everyone, he has graciously come before me while I am ending my life, for I am his unflinching servitor. See? So, such a... <laughs> One thing he is telling, uh, he is admitting here is, I am Ekanta Bhakti. I am Ekanta Bhakti. Now, this is not uh, boasting, Bhishma Dev is not boasting about himself. He is mentioning one's qualification to get the audience of Supreme Lord. Yes. So that is why he is calling himself Ekanta Bhakti Shu. Because if he was not Ekanta Bhakti, Krishna wouldn't have appeared before him. Krishna gives his darshan only to Ekanta Bhakti. And Gajendra proves that. Ekanti no yasya na kachanta nartam vancham viye vai bhagavat prapanna atyadbhutam tatcharitam sumangalam Gayanta Ananda Samudra Magna. So Gajendra also prays the same way. And he says, Ekanti no Yasyana Kanchanartam. Vanchanti Eve Bhagavat Prapanna. And uh, they, the devotees who are Ekanta Bhaktas, they get tremendous bliss. Tremendous bliss. The main reason is because the living entity, Prabhupada writes, a living entity is made so by the will of Lord that he experiences greatest happiness by placing himself in a condition of absolute dependence on Krishna. See this. A living entity is so made by the will of the Almighty that he is most happy when placing himself in that condition of absolute dependence on Krishna. We are made like this. So anytime we are not experiencing happiness, bliss in our Krishna consciousness, we should understand that we are showing our dependence on something else, Krishna Itara, something other than Krishna. And uh, can someone read this? The opposite tendency is the cause of fall down. The living entity has this tendency of falling down by dint of misidentifying himself as fully independent and thus free to lord it over the material world. The root cause of all troubles is their in false ego egotism one must give up this false sense of complete independence and thus draw more attention of the lord in all circumstances bhakti rod thakur also prays right 
बड़ो दुखो पाइयाची स्वतंत्र जीवाने दुख दुरे गेलो ओ पदवराने एको ना भजी नो प्रभु तो मार चराना अशोक भया मृता पुना सर्व काला so this is that particular song where bhakti not thakur is advertising to all jeevas he is telling us that see i tried independent life i miserably suffered and i know you are also suffering miserably because of being independent of krishna but try to surrender and give this one life to krishna there is this one life so many lives we given to maya so give this one life to krishna and you will experience parama anande nachi tava guna gaiya you will dance and chant in ecstasy so please try this one lifetime by giving it to krishna that's what all acharyas are telling us now bhishma dev is amazed in this shloka he is showing his amazement see arjuna me se bhagwan bhagwan mere ko bhi to mile i also got uh, association of krishna i got uh, direct dealings with krishna so bhishma dev is telling arjuna see you have some bodily relationship with krishna see i don't even have a bodily relationship with krishna directly correct so despite apparently no bodily connection being there krishna has come here for what he has come here because i am a ekanta bhakta is ekanta bhakta correct so this attraction the cause of attraction is due to intimate relationship of soul also one more thing that uh, bhishma dev was aware that krishna will always be pleased when he is called out in relationship with his devotees that is why we always say krishna nanda nandana yashoda nandan devki nandan yes Rad, radhika priyadhana vijaya sakha partha sakha yes all these things so the different different humors that krishna carries with his devotees bishma dev was aware of everything bishma was completely aware of all the rasa that krishna has with his devotees and when we take shelter of krishna along with the transcendental humor that he has with his pure devotees then we approach krishna in a better way we should not approach krishna directly that is why later on you will see that uh, bishma dev addresses krishna as vijay sakhe vijay is arjuna vijay sakhe means the f- the friend of vijay arjuna even uh, kunti marani does that only in the last uh, last verse 43rd i think 1.8.43 shri krishna krishna sakha so she is calling krishna as krishna sakha now here krishna sakha is who krishna is arjuna's another name also because arjuna also is dra- black in color because arjuna also is dark he is called as krishna so krishna sakha so she is calling krishna as arjuna's uh, friend so she is seeing arjuna not as her own son she see arjuna as a vaishnava here kunti marani krishna sakha so one should never approach the lord directly there must be a transparent via medium who leads us to the right path to revive our relationship with krishna so we should approach krishna through recognized devotees that's what bhishma dev will teach us ahead ekanta bhakta approaches krishna with his recognized devotees only okay so now krishna is some or the other appeared here because i am ekanta bhakta but normally when somebody is not ekanta bhakta then how difficult it is for krishna to appear kya kya karna padta hai that is explained in next verse bhaktya avesha mano yasmin vacha yan nama kirtayan yajan kalevaram yogi muchyate kama karma bhi the personality of godhead who appears in the mind of devotee by attentive devotion and meditation and by chanting of holy name releases the devotee from bondage of fruitive activities at the time of his quitting the material body yes it is not very easy for krishna to appear in the mind because now krishna has appeared in front of me but normally krishna appears in the mind yes bhaktiya avesh when you are completely avesh means you are absorbed in bhakti mano that time in the mind mano yasmin man me vacha yan nama kirtayan through your speech through your words yan nama kirtayan you are chanting the holy name 
त्यजन कलेवरम एट द टाइम ऑफ लिविंग द बॉडी सच अ योगी मुच्छंते ही गिव्स अप काम एंड कर्म भी ही गिव्स अप ऑल फ्रूटिव डिजायर्स एज वेल एज फ्रूटिव एक्टिविटीज मुच्छंते यस ही ही रिलीज गेट्स रिलीज फ्रॉम दैट ही गिव्स अप सो हियर सो मच इट इज नॉट वेरी इजी टू अट्रैक्ट मेक कृष्णा अपीयर इन वंस माइंड इज नॉट एट ऑल नॉट इजी इट्स वेरी डिफिकल्ट सो भीष्म देव इज एप्रिशिएटिंग कृष्णास कंपैशन anukampita that you appear with great difficulty so that's why even kulishekar alwar what does he say krishna twadiya pada pankaja panjarantam advaiva me vishat manas raja hamsa prana prayana samaye kahavat pitta kantavarodha makaro bhuvaneshu kintu so kulishekar alwar is telling let me die right now because right now i am able to chant your names right now I'm, i can remember you easily but at the time of death my my throat will be completely choked with mucus that time i cannot i cannot remember you it will be very tough i will be very bodily conscious and in such bodily concept of life uh, remembering krishna is very difficult that's what arjuna's question also was arjuna asks the same thing only prayana kale chapi mam how can i remember you at the time of death death is a very painful situation and that is why one has to practice life long life long one has to practice remembrance of krishna here yogi prabhupad elaborates on this one word yogi yes they also people they they are very attracted to this word yoga his grace radhesham pro gave the name to our project as bhakti yoga club so we get so many people who come every day aap log yoga sikhate hain kya Yes, we say yes. हम सिखाते हैं. We teach bhakti yoga. We say वो नहीं हमको normal yoga सीखना है. The people's conception of yoga means to cure, uh, cure the roga for doing more bhoga. That is their conception of yoga. <laughs> cure the roga to more bhoga. But ultimately, nobody teaches the real purpose of yoga. Even uh, B. S. Iyengar had met his oldest Raghunath Maharaj. So he met and he was in tears. he said you are the real yogi you are teaching people how to connect to krishna we are just teaching people some gymnastic and bodily exercise we are cheating people even he was telling that actually uh, the goal of yoga is samadhi prabhupad would always say okay you are yogi have you attained samadhi nowadays people just want some flexibility of the body they want to show some flexibility they call themselves yogi yoginis etc so now in this particular situation which is mentioned that krishna appearing in the mind samadhi na that is very rare not everybody reaches the state of samadhi that is why when arjuna hears about all these things oh my god there is yam niyam asana pranayam pratyahara dharana dhyana samadhi are yahan tak to koi pahunchta nahi hoga that's why he asked the question what if a fellow he becomes like a riven cloud he is neither bhautik sukh bhi nahi mila usko success bhi nahi mila to so, kya hoga uska because arjuna when he understood the path of ashtanga yoga he understood yahan pe to bahut kam success rate hai right so i was giving a talk to all the students yes so i asked which is the most competitive exam they said oh upsc kuch log 5 6 6 attempt they keep giving still they don't clear the prelims also very tough i said the more tougher than that tougher than upsc is also much much million trillion times tougher is actually to remember krishna in the mind मैया सक्त मना पार्थ योग मनाशेटिवली but holy name cannot be captured mechanically no we can't we require the grace of krishna only when krishna's grace is there then we can hear the holy name yannama shruti matrena puman bhavati nirmala and then krishna enters the heart tavishta karna randrena swanam bhava saroham dunoti shamala krishna sharilasya yatashat it is possible only by grace we think that by one's own ability, ability one can uh, chant attentively it is not possible one requires grace of guru grace of shila prabhupad grace of haridas thakur nam acharya grace of the supreme lord grace of nam prabhu we need all that 
and uh, it it especially requires a very very uh, great uh, deal of mercy to chant the holy name at the time of quitting the body it's not easy right last one last paragraph of the purport which is mentioned to this one muchante kama karma bhi this is actually a grace of lord everything is grace of lord bhakti avesh mano yasmin is grace of lord vacha yannama kirtan is grace of lord prabhupad simply says there one two three four what is this to uh, have the mind completely absorbed in bhakti grace of lord is required to chant the holy name at the time of death grace of lord is required second muchante kama karma bhi and somebody's materialistic propensity is finished at the time of death that also requires grace of lord when shila prabhupad was departing from this world devotees went and asked prabhupad so prabhupad what can we do for you prabhupad said kuch ichcha nahi kuch ichcha nahi now only of us can say that but kuch ichcha nahi muchante kama karma bhi that if somebody is able to say that kuch ichcha nahi that means one has actually attained the mercy of lord and now he has spoken this particular verse he has spoken that how such a great lord is not very easily attainable but he has come in front of me so now i have got that great fortune i have somehow got this great fortune so i request you waise bhi bhagwan ka darshan durlabh hai bahut durlabh hai kaise bhi karke bhagwan bahut difficulty se milte hai it's very difficult to get the darshan of lord or to meditate on lord so i request you to please stay here yes so he is going to request the lord to please remain here please don't go <clears throat> whenever in bhagavatam long verses come then somebody's emotions are coming out then the long meter sa deva devo bhagavan pratikshatam kale varam yavadidam hinom yaham prasanna hasaruna lochano lasan mukhambujo dhyana patas chaturbuja are me my lord who is 400 and who is beautifully decorated lotus face i am as the rising sun is smiling and i await me at that moment when i quit this material body <coughs> excuse me yes so although krishna was present in two handed form what does bhishma dev uh, want to see the lord as in four handed form chaturbhuja he wants to see the lord as chaturbhujam because bhishma uh, dev uh, his gati is vaikuntha gati <laughs> excuse me his gati is vaikuntha gati so he wants to see the lord in, as 400 narayana that is why sa so, deva devo bhagavan pratikshata please wait please wait deva deva you are the devas deva kalevaram yavadidam hinobhyam as long as until i am in there in this material body i want to see prasanna hasa aruna lochana ullasan that uh, like the heralds of the rising sun that kind of eyes that you have i want to see mukha ambujo lotus face dhyana pathas dhyana pathas means you are actually the path of dhyana if somebody is saying main dhyan kar raha hu dhyan kar raha hu kis pe dhyan kar raha that is very important if se kisi pe dhyan nahi kar raha that means you are foolish Bhishma Dev is clearly telling Bhyana Patas, your object of meditation has to be a personality. Turbuja. This form is the four-handed form. So it was sure. Now Prabhupada writes here the humility about humility of Bhishma. There was absolutely no doubt that Bhishma Dev was going to Vaikunda. Still, Vaishnavas are very humble, very very humble. So he wanted to see the Lord one last time. so that because he knows after going to vaikuntha he will not see krishna yes i he may not be able to see krishna again so that is why he is asking krishna to wait this is humility of bhishma dev so devotees are going back to god and especially they they are very humble can you give some more example one example from bhagavatam where somebody was going back to god but he was very very humble dhruva maharaj yes dhruva maharaj dhruva maharaj when he was doing his sadhana the vaikuntha plane came what did dhru maharaj do he offered his obeisances but he didn't know actually there is a way of welcoming the vaikuntha vasis there is a method but dhru did not know so he just started chanting the name that's the right procedure suppose aapko kuch pata nahi hai chanting karo 
मंत्रिदम देश कालहारी वस्तु सर्व करोति छिद्रम अनुसंकर्तन तव सो एनी प्रोसीजर रिचुअल इफ देर इज एनी शार्ट कमिंग अनुसंकर्तन जस्ट पर्फॉम द संकर्तन एंड एवरीथिंग बिकम्स पर्फेक्ट सो ही डजेंट नो द प्रोसीजर टू रिसीव सो ही जस्ट चैंड संकर्तन एंड देन ही गोस takes blessings of all the other yogis and sages who are there and takes their blessings to go back to god it so this is the quality of vaishnava very humble he is as such prabhupada writes that a pure devotee is never ever concerned about going back to god it no he is not concerned he simply depends on will of lord even he is he is satisfied even if lord wants to send him to hell correct you no problem but he wants one thing one thing that he wants is he want to absorb in the lord's uh, name fame qualities and past time with rapt attention it is only desire of a, a devotee so we hear this sloka also right narayana para sarve na kutaschana vidyati swarga apavarga narkeshu api tulyartha darshina this is what shiva tells parvati look at chitraketu narayana para he is a narayan parayan sarve all devotees of narayana are like this na kutaschana bibyati you put them anywhere na bibyati they are not afraid swarga you send them to heaven apavarga you send uh, give them moksha narakeshu you can even send them to hell api tulya artha darshina they are equally disposed wherever they go they will keep glorifying the lord I studied in a missionary school christian missionary school so there everything every time the prayer ends they used to tell uh, may thy name be praised o lord both in heaven as well as on earth amen i used to wonder why why lord's name should not be um, actually glorified in hell that is only vaishnava thinking <laughs> only vaishnavas can think like that right there is a question if bhishma dev is attached to krishna then why is he going to vaikuntha confused no bhishma dev is attached to narayan only his gati is vaikuntha gati is naturally see everybody what happens is uh, if you read the bhakti rasamrita sindhu we hear about the nine stages of bhakti correct ta sadha we, we have adav shabda sadhu sanga bhajan kriya anarth nivritti nishtha ruchi asakti bhav and prem after the stage of prema once prema is attained then after that stage your some things are revealed to you your swarupa is revealed swarupa means which, which is sorry mukti hitva anyata roopam swarupena vyavasthiti what is your name where is your house with what name lord will call you what's particular service that you render to lord all these things are revealed so beyond the stage of prema one understands what is one's gati yes so one understands some people in uh, they have not even crossed anarth nivritti some people come and ask prabhu ji uh, i am more attracted to ram than krishna what to do are first go <laughs> we are still in anartha stage pehle wo sadhna bhakti karo ye sab baad ka hai now you are attracted to movie stars and cricket stars also <laughs> usse bhi attracted hai so what you will go to their dham yes we say bhagavad gita krishna says yanti deva vrata devan pitrin yanti pitr vrata bhutani yanti bhutej yanti madhya ajuna pimam so people are attracted to bollywood stars yes cricket stars they go to their planets <laughs> hari krishna so we cannot comment about our rasa because rasa is beyond prema so once bishma dev has gone beyond prema stage so he knows his rasa with the lord so his rati is vaikuntha rati and uh, actually if you see for him krishna will appear in four hand only just like hanuman and arjun had a duel they had a fight once and arjuna said that uh, why did ram build uh, the setu band he could have just put a bed of arrows if you serve us rest dhanur dar hanuman said that no no there were big big bulky bulky monkeys it is not possible they are all right i will make a bed of arrows let's see so he puts a bed of arrows and hanuman is trying to destroy that and arjun is trying to hold it and from down some blood starts coming and both of them are wondering they go down and see so hanuman sees that lord ram yes he is trying to put the arrows down and arjuna sees krishna is trying to hold the arrow up so both of them see actually it is krishna only but arjuna sees krishna as krishna and hanuman sees krishna as ram so as per one swarup uh, one uh, attraction for the lord one sees that particular form of lord and then both stop their fight because their lord is getting hurt and that is when krishna tells uh, hanuman that you should assist he sees him as ram 
Vitya sees that Ram is giving instruction. So you assist uh, Arjuna in his battle. Then Hanuman said, "Don't. I will. I will uh, sit on his flag. And with his flag, what I'll do is I'll give war cries. I shout loudly. And when I shout loudly, thousand enemy soldiers will die in the front. So I'll give war cries. And any kind of deadly weapons to which comes to hit my Arjuna, my younger brother, I'll beat with my gada. And I'll say Jai Sri Ram and I'll beat. So like that, uh, Hanuman accepts Arjuna as his younger brother and he protects him. That's why Arjuna's another name is Kapit Dwaja." Yes, like that. So, whichever form you are attracted to, Lord will see that. You will see the Lord in that form. It is there Bhagavatam also, right? Tvan Bhakti Yoga Paribhavita Hrit Saroja Aste Shrutekshi Tapato Nanunam Tapumsam Yadyad Dhyata Urugaya Vibhava Yanti Tattad Vapu Pranayaseta Anugrahaya. The Lord's Anugraha or His compassion is that whichever form the devotee wants to see Him, in that particular form, Lord appears for the devotee. So Bhishmandev is Vaikuntar. Okay. So again, now here uh, we saw the different uh, flow of events. Suddenly, Yudhishthir Maharaj realizes, oh, I think Bhishma is about to internalize his consciousness. So Krishna inspires Yudhishthir Maharaj in some way. Let us see how Krishna is inspiring Yudhishthir Maharaj. I think we are halfway. What I'll do is I'll just quickly give a halfway summary so that we can just recap. Okay, we started with 18, correct? Now we are on 25th. So 18th, we started with a new theme, correct? So here Bhishma Devi is explaining about the truth, Krishna's position, truth about Krishna's position. That's how we started. And then he quotes authority in the 19th verse. He substantiates his statement with authority. Then he says that how you, you all have been under illusion treating Krishna like an ordinary human being. Then he says what is the true position of Krishna. Then he says that such a, a Krishna who is having such an exalted position has appeared in front of me. So he is in great ecstasy. But when does he normally appear? It is not easy. He appears only by his grace. He appears in mind. He makes. He appears through holy name. And he appears and kills all the materialistic propensities. Only by his grace. And thus he tells the Lord, please stay here. Let me meditate. And Yudhishthir Maharaj realizes that he is about to uh, internalize his consciousness. Okay. Tuta uvacha. essential principles of various various Religious duties. Yes. So now again here, the will of Lord. The will of Lord is visible here. Now it is Lord who inspired Yudhishthir Maharaj that now you ask some very nice questions to Bhishma Dev about dharmas. Dharmas means duties. About different, different duties you please ask. So now, if you see Bhishma Dev was a worldly man. He was surrounded with all political duties. He was <laughs> he was with Chakuni. He was with Duryodhan and all such uh, evil-minded, wicked-minded people, right? So some people even say Bhishma, Namakkhaya, etc. But Prabhupada writes in the purport that Yudhishthir Maharaj knew that Bhishma is a Mahajana and he was superior to many many great sages, including Yasdev including the literary incarnation Yasdev, he was superior to them. That is why Krishna inspires Yudhishthir Maharaj that you ask questions to Vishma about duties. So you ask. Now, if you see here, the Lord had different purposes. Number one, he wanted to prove to the world. Yudhishthir Maharaj also knew it. Now he wanted to prove to the world that Bhishma is the greatest soul present on the planet at that time. So Krishna wanted to uh, glorify Bhishma like that. 
number one first reason why this leela is happening the second reason is uh, krishna wants to prove that his pure devotee is beyond he is very sound in body and mind because of his spiritual enlightenment even if he is lying on sharashaya this is the second thing he wanted to prove one thing established the glory of bhishma dev more than vyas number two he wanted to prove that a devotee is always sound in body and mind let's look at the example of prabhupada how many of you seen your ever well wisher video you see last scene jayadwait maharaj is holding the dictaphone and prabhupada is giving commentary to the 10th canto 13th chapter everything walking and moving is acting under the direct control of krishna so he is giving his commentaries so he was he had clear intellect he was not disturbed normally people go um, completely bizarre in the last stages of life but prabhupada was very very clear and sound the passing away of prabhupada and passing away of bhishma dev has lot of uh, similarities correct so he, krishna wanted to prove that his devotee is always clear and sound in body mind and intellect because of his spiritual advancement yeah and uh, number 3 prabhupada also writes the third reason is yudhishthir maharaj had so many other places where he could have gone for guidance and there were people who were more learned in shastras than bhishma dev they were there but especially we need to understand uh, krishna is teaching that worship of my devotee is better than worship of lord aradhana nam sarvesham vishnu aradhanam param tasmat paratram devim tadiyanam samarchanam so first is to establish that bhishma dev is the greatest his glory number 2 that even in aggrieved situation pure devotee is sound in mind body and intellect because of spiritual advancement and third although krishna is present there yes krishna is also present there yudhishthira maharaj could have gone to krishna but no worship of devotee is more important so you take shelter of devotee more than me that also krishna wanted to prove these are the three reasons why krishna inspired yudhishthira maharaj to ask question somebody is leaving the body and going ideally you are not supposed to ask questions at that time come on what is this vishwadev is in such a pain he is don't you have any sensitivity yudhishthir maharaj normally you are very sensitive you are kind you are considerate you are dharmaraj ka gaya tera sensitivity and as no it is krishna's daiva choditam it is krishna's inspiration so it is krishna who inspired yudhishthir to ask questions next so so now you you will see that the different dharmas are going to be explained from here vishnu dev will start explaining here what he explains we will see that some portion of purports we will read some we will not read okay so the first thing that he is going to explain is the varnashram dharma पुषस्व भाव विहिताश्रम वैराग्य रागोपाद्याण हरे कृष्ण एट महाराज युधिष्ठिर एनक्वायरी भीष्मेव फर्स्ट डिफाइंड ऑल दी क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ कास्ट एंड ऑर्डर ऑफ लाइफ इन टर्म्स ऑफ दी इंडिव्यूजल क्वालिफिकेशन then he systematically in two four divisions described the counteraction by detachment and interaction by attachment purusha hmm. swabhava vihitan there are this word vihita is a very very important word in the shastras there are three types of karmas which are mentioned विहित कर्म निषिद्ध कर्म एंड काम्य कर्म सो विहित कर्म आर शास्त्रिक स्टेटमेंट शास्त्रिक स्टेटमेंट आर कॉल्ड एज विहित कर्म दैट मीन समी इज फॉलोइंग द शास्त्र इज इज डूइंग विहित कर्म देन देर इज निषिद्ध कर्म दैट इज गोइंग अगेन्स्ट द शास्त्र समी इज गोइंग अगेन्स्ट द शास्त्र ही इज डूइंग 
निषिद्धाचार एग्जाम्पल ब्रेकिंग फॉर रेगुलेटिव प्रिंसिपल्स एंड काम्य कर्म इज वॉट काम्य कर्म आर दो कर्मास विच अराइज आउट ऑफ अ पर्सन हैविंग मटेरियलिस्टिक डिजायर्स बट ही इज एंगेजिंग देम इन सच अ वे दैट ही इज गोइंग टू प्यूरिफाई दोज डिजायर्स दैट इज कॉल्ड काम्य कर्म इट मीन्स ठीक है इट्स नॉट अगेंस्ट इट इज नॉट वॉट शास्त्र से बट काम्य कर्म इज ओके इट्स 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 एक्सेप्टेबल something like that now for example vita karma means one uh, chant chant the holy name worship the deities yes nama sadhu sangha namak kirtana bhagavat shravana mathura vasa shri murti rashadaya sevana these are all vidh karmas ka and nishiddha karma is dutam sta panam striya shuna yatra dharma sta turvida we know that the four regulative principles kamya karma is something which uh, now it may be necessary for us to do if we are living in this world Like we may have to be updated with certain news, example. We may have to know what is happening around the world because we are living in this world. So like that. So that they are all called karma karma. So pusha swabhava. So based on the nature, Prabhupada writes swabhava in another place as psychophysical nature. Psychophysical nature. So based on one psychophysical nature, everybody has different types of vihita karmas. One person's vihit karma may be different. Vaisve karma karma ni abhirata ha amse dhim narate nama. So Krishna also says that very uh, nicely that everybody is supposed to do their prescribed duty. For doing another's prescribed duty is dangerous. You heard this? Don't do another person's prescribed duty. Do yours. Vaisve karma ni abhirata ha. Yatha varnam thashe akshama. So based on one swabhav, one psychophysical nature. the community the purusha the human uh, society is divided into varna and ashrama but what is the purpose of varna ashram the purpose of varna ashram is actually vairagya yes it is vairagya to become detached from this world that is the main purpose rago padipyam and uh, all the attachment and false designation one should give it up that is the purpose sarvopadi vinirmuktam tat paratvena nirmalam rishikesha rishikena sevanam bhakti ruchate hmm? we say that right so that very systematically amanat amanata ubhaya lakshanam so he explained very systematically about the varna ashram dharma So Prabhupada has taken some uh, words from the Shanti Parva of Mahabharat, sixtieth chapter. There he goes on to mention certain advice for all human beings. Now these are common advice for everybody. First of all, this uh, this explained. We say na ahara nidra bhaye mai tu namche samane mai tad pashubin na rana dharmo hi tesha madiko visesho dharme ni hi na pashubin samana. The four common activities: eating, sleeping, mating, defending between human and animals. but is dharma that makes a human different from animals so what is the what is dharma for all human beings everybody common dharma these nine things can someone read vishva deva advice vishva deva advised for all human beings nine qualifications not to be angry not to lie to equally distribute wealth to forgive to beget children only by one's legitimate wife to be pure in mind and hygienic in body not to be inimical towards anyone to be simple and to support servants or subordinates so this is the symptom of the civilized human being which means the moment you want to be in the system of varnashram we need to have these qualities then you are qualified to Take part in the varnashram. So these are general symptoms. Brahman ho, ya, Manisha, Shudra, whoever it be, these are the nine qualities required. So these are such, such very very high standards that we can see here. So other, if one is not following this, he is not a civilized human. That is mentioned. Then uh, for Brahmanas, what is the duty of Brahmana? 
ड्यूटीज ऑफ ब्राह्मण आर डिस्क्राइब सिक्स सिक्स ड्यूटीज एवन नोस वॉट आर दे पठन पाठन यजन पठन पाठन यजन 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 दान लेना दान दान लेना परिग्रह करेक्ट सो दीज आर द सिक्स ऑफ़ ब्राह्मण वेरी एलैबरेटली गिवन अबाउट क्षत्रिय ड्यूटीज वैश्य नॉट मच शूद्र नॉट मच बट मेनली अबाउट ब्राह्मण गिवन दिस सिक्स थिंग्स ओनली मेजर एक्टिविटी ऑफ अ ब्राह्मण इज टू Study the shastras and to preach the shastras, and that's why Prabhupada would often say that our ISKCON is a Brahman-producing movement because we are teaching shastras to everyone and inspiring everyone to go and preach the shastras. Even if you read the fourth chapter of uh, Bhagavad Gita, in the fourth chapter there are different kinds of yagna mentioned. There is a dravya yagna and there is jnana yagna. Dravyas are uh, with material things objects sacrifice of material objects but the gyana yagna the sacrifice of knowledge distribution of knowledge is superior to dravya yagnas so that is why brahmana performs the highest quality of service to the society because he is guiding the society by transmitting knowledge that perfect guidance he is giving to the society okay kshatriyas i just uh, Highlight one portion you can read. You can read this. This paragraph. Not able to hear it. We are unable to hear it. There is a lot of. The Shatriya. I am letting you. The hours are done. Maybe Prabhu, you can adjust your mic. We, the next devotee can read. The Shatriya, the, the member Shatriya, of the Shatriya, the. The Kshatriya, the member of the administrative class, is especially advised to give charity and not to accept charity in any circumstances. Modern administrators raise subscriptions for some political functions, but never give charity to the citizens in any state function. It is just the reverse in the injunctions of the shastras. The administrative class must be well versed in the shastras. but must not take to the profession of teachers their energy sh- should be specially directed towards killing the thieves the dacoits the black marketeers and all such undesirable elements of society the administrators should never pretend to become non violent and thereby go to hell when arjuna wanted to become a non violent coward on the battlefield of kurukshetra he was severely chastised by lord krishna the lord uh, degraded arjuna at that time to the status of an uncivilized man for his avowed acceptance of the cult of non violence the administrative class must be personally trained in military education cowards should not be elevated to the presidential throne by dint of numerical votes the monarchs were all chivalrous chivalrous personalities and therefore monarchy should be maintained provide provided the monarch is regularly trained in the occupational duties of a king in fighting the king or the president should never return home without being hurt by the enemy the so called king of today never visits the war field he is very much expert in artificially encouraging the fighting strength in the hope of false national prestige as soon as the administrative class is turned into a gang of mercantile and laborer men the whole machinery of government becomes polluted see in the 16th chapter of the first canto we find that the kali dresses as that false king she wears the garb of a king and is cheating everybody so what does that mean he is torturing the cow 
that means that dasyu prayeshu sarveshu dasyu means looters the kings are all going to be looters they will simply exploit the citizens nothing else so if kshatriya is said kshatriya should give lot of charity but never take charity do administration do they, they do that no they simply take charity and they don't give anything in return that's what they do administrators are they learned in shastras oh they don't know anything they some of them may learn some political science or some subject but as such they don't know one shloka of shastras they are simply their basis of ruling people is how to exploit others nicely that's all nothing else and if you see that all the thieves rogues rascals black marketers they are flourishing in the society why because there is no proper kshatriya the proper kshatriya is there then all these miscreants should be punished they will not exist in parichit maharaj times there was nobody yudhishthir maharaj times there was no person gaya maharaj amrish maharaj in fact in their times people all wanted to go back to godhead and such miscreants did not exist so that is ideal kshatriya life on the other hand these people some of them become non violent and even today if you see that capital punishments are all banned they are hanged to be hanged till death si ki saza now they now is they are cancelling in america they put a prisoner in imprisonment for 150 years 250 years of imprisonment they put like that it is not correct manu samhita says if somebody is murdered then the king is supposed to take a life for a life by that what will happen that the severity of hellish punishment of that person will be reduced on the other hand the king is not punishing that person the person has to suffer so much in hell yes so unnecessary non violence is something that should not be adopted yeah and the another thing that we see in this world yeah the kings the kings and leaders they don't visit the war and they just sit in their rooms and offices and inspiring others to go so now if you see the vedic times the king will be the first person to be going ahead in the war so we see all these things and we understand that we, there is no satriya rule and that's why prabhupada said monarch monarchy should be there but that monarch also should be trained under brahmana he should be properly uh, guided sheltered by brahmana and directed by brahmana to rule okay vaishyas oh vaishyas they are supposed to do three things krishi goraksha vanigya she is agriculture so that they produce food grains uh, goraksha is cow protection and big business vanigya so once go raksha was translated by some of prabhupad disciples as cattle raising they translated as cattle raising and prabhupad was very angry he said cattle raising why do people raise cattle to send to slaughter house don't say cattle raising go raksha vaishya dharma is go raksha raksha means protection how protection cattle raising people do to eat later on go raksha is uh, mentioned and thus vaishyas they have a great contribution to society to pro- provide lot of fruits milk and all valuable substances shudra shudra should simply serve the higher classes and he should not be given any independence shudra should not be given independence and whatever they should not be given money also yeah whatever clothing food he receives from his master he just accepts that yeah just read this paragraph also it will be very clear then i'll explain the highlighted part the whole system uh, mata ji please read gopita okay thank you so much the whole system of ashrama dharma is to, is a means to detachment one who fails the detachment is allowed to enter into a family life with the same spirit of detachment therefore one who attains detachment may at once adopt the fourth order namely renounce and thus live on charity only not to accumulate wealth but just to keep body and soul together for the ultimate realization household life is for one who is attached and the vanaprastha and the sanyasa order of life are for those who are detached from material life the brahmachari ashram is especially meant for training both the attached and the detached yes in the student training life a person is attached and detached at the same time on the other hand a grihastha should be externally attached internally detached 
and vanaprastha and sanyasis should be completely detached if you see this detachment is gradually cultivated in varnashram even in sanyas there are four stages is kuti chakka bahudaka parivrajaka acharya and paramahamsa i'll tell you what are these stages kuti chakka kuti chakka is a person stays in a kutir in his village apne gaon mein rehta hai and his wife will come and give him dabba prasad <laughs> wife comes and gives him dabba and he eats that is kuti chakka and he is trying still jam rahe ki nahi apne ko yes in any can return back in case he is not then there is bahudaka now he has got sufficient confidence he says wife no no dabba prasad no now i'll go and uh, i will uh, beg my on my own so then he goes and he goes to different different houses within the same village he is called bahudaka he goes and begs the third is now he is completely confident parivrajaka acharya now he goes beyond his village to go and uh, travel all around preaching and begging and living and finally one attains the stage of paramahamsa yes now the place where he stays doesn't matter time place circumstances he is always surrendered to supreme lord like that so if you see the vedic society even sanyas has four stages it gradually t- trains us in detachment but the best way to get detached is by getting attached to krishna upad has given maximum l- number of lectures on 7.1 maya asakta mana partha yogam yunjan madashraya asamshaya samagram mam yatha gnasasi tatshun we we'll just quickly see that one minute huh? by simply by hearing about krishna we can become completely detached from maya and attached to krishna this is the goal of life propal is given 35 lectures on this verse because this is our goal tatshrunu you hear first when you hear about krishna what happened yata agnyasasi you get knowledge when you get knowledge what happens asamshaya samagram your doubts are completely destroyed when your doubts are destroyed what happens madashraya you take shelter of krishna you take shelter of krishna what happens yoga munjan you are engaged in the process of yoga and if you are engaged in the process of yoga what happens your mind becomes attached to krishna correct so varnashram is a path of detachment but our path is bhakti yoga which is the path of attachment to krishna and moment we are attached to krishna we automatically become detached from maya correct yeah next dana dharman raj dharman moksha dharman vibhagashah श्री धर्मान भगवत धर्मान समास व्यास योगतः सो ही डिस्क्राइब्स द फाइव टाइप्स ऑफ धर्मस सच्ची सुंदरी माता जी कैन ही देन एक्सप्लेन्ड बाय डिविजंस एक्ट्स ऑफ चैरिटी द प्रैग्मेटिक एक्टिविटीज ऑफ अ किंग एंड एक्टिविटीज फॉर सैल्वेशन then he described the duties of women and devotee both briefly and extensively yeah thank you so here five types of dharma he explains first is dana dharma if vedic culture is a culture of giving 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 give cows in charity give land to brahmanas give gold give just keep giving <coughs> and a person who gives such a person lives a life of abundance somehow this kali yuga the material culture is to just store and hold things and the other hand vedic culture is never like that vedic culture is all about giving so that is why the first dharma he explains is dana dharma <laughs> dan and especially grahasthas they are the ones who are supposed to do this dana dharma because other three sections of society will not earn the brahmachari is the vana pras sanyasis they are not the earning members of society the grahasthas are the earning members of society and that's why rupa goswami says 50% ab ye sunke bahut logon ko heart attack aa jata hai are wah wah 50% bachega kya so there is a very nice understanding that is there that as soon as the money the wealth that done that comes dan ko dan karna chahiye so we create two accounts one is personal account one is krishna account yes so in krishna account we can use that money for uh, doing nitya seva we can use that money to uh, conduct house programs we can use that money to invite uh, devotees and sadhus for uh, brahman bhojan we can use that money for uh, buying clothes for the deities and for decorating altar devotional paraphernalia for going to yatras so that will be completely krishna conscious account 
that is krishna account right and uh, other 50% we can use for our personal expenses whatever is there so that way if we keep devotional account and uh, 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 our personal account we will be able to see that how the money is being spent correct so that is why rup goswami says that 50% should be given in krishna service and prabhupada mentions that many times so that is the dana dharma plus practically raj dharma raj dharma is how to rule the citizens so there's a beautiful verse that comes in bhagavatam i'll show it ilanam upalalanam Yeah, this is how Gaya Maharaj ruled. Raja Dharma. This one verse in Bhagavatam explains about what is Raja Dharma very nicely. First, ensure that full protection and security is given to, so that their personal property will not be disturbed by undesirable elements. Then there is Poshanam. Poshanam is what? Poshanam means they should all get food. Then Prinanam. Prinanam means give gifts to citizens. Then upalalana. Upalalana means have meetings and satisfy the, uh, the citizens with sweet words. Then give good instructions. Anushasana. Yes. So these four words describe everything. What is that? Poshanam, Prinana, Upalalana, Anushasana. So these four things summarize what is Rajadharma. Very nicely. You can note the verse. for uh, reading later 5 15 seven so that explains what is uh, raja dharma then moksha dharma now moksha dharma is to everybody should focus towards attaining liberation dharma artha kama moksha the fourth purushartha everybody should have a detached temperament while living in this world and stri dharma stri dharma will directly read from prabhupada in this world we should have an exit plan ya yeah, stri dharma as far as women and women are concerned they are accepted as the power of inspiration for men as such women are more powerful than men mighty julius caesar was controlled by cleopatra such powerful women are controlled by shyness therefore shyness is important for women once this control valve is valve is loosened women can create havoc in society by adultery adultery means production of unwanted children known as varna sankara who who disturb the world yes this is also mentioned in niti shastra by chanakya what is the very amazing weapon of women lajja the shyness so the shyness a woman can control anything so that little bit glimpse about stri dharma is mentioned finally there is bhagavad dharma bhagavad dharma is how to please krishna that was a main subject matter how to please krishna so prabhupada mentions five things associate with devotees uh, chant the holy name worship deities reside in holy place and uh, shri murti ra sadya sevana worship deities So Sadhu Sangha, Nama Kirtan, Bhagavat Shravan. Listen to Bhagavatam, Mathura Vasa, Shri Murthi, Shraddha Seven. These five items, because the Bhakti Rasamrit Chindu says that somebody who comes in contact even little bit, Alpa Sangha, even little bit, you come in contact with any of these five powerful elements, one will find that one can attain prema. One will please the Lord very easily. Okay, next is Purusharthas. He explained about the. फोर पुरुषार्थस धर्मार्थ काम मोक्षम च सहोपायान यथा मुने नाना ख्याने इतिहासेशु वर्णयामास तत्ववित हि देन ही डिस्क्राइब द ऑक्युपेशनल ड्यूटीज ऑफ डिफरेंट ऑर्डर्स एंड स्टेटस ऑफ लाइफ 
citing instances from history for he was himself well acquainted with the truth yes so different historic histories and itihasas mm. and mahabharat ramayana puranas so with all that he explained about dharma artha kama and moksha what are these four purusharthas dharmam pravadatastasya sakala sakala pratyupasita yo yogina chanda mrityor vanchitas tuttarayana Vishmadev was describing occupational duties. The sun's course ran in the northern hemisphere. This period is... This period is desired by mystics who die at their will. Hare Krishna. In 8th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, there are four conditions mentioned. Anyone knows what are the four conditions for quitting the body at the time of death? Try, try. Don't talk. Uttarayan, daytime. Yes, one should leave body in Uttarayan. So Uttarayan means when the sun is in the northern hemisphere. Why? Because it's daytime for demigods. Because the demigods, uh, they also assist the jiva to go transport to the higher realm. So that is very important. Then second? Daytime. Daytime. So night is the dark hours. The negative evil energies are prominent. In the daytime, the evil energies are absent. So there won't be any obstacles. The third one? Shukla Paksh. Yes. It should be in Shukla Paksh. In the waxing of the moon, not in the waning of the moon. Yes, that is Shukla Paksh. And not Krishna Paksh. One more? When there is light. Yes, when there is light or fire. Fire God, fire God is prominent. Fiery, not smoky day. a fiery day agni dev has to be present okay so agni dev's kripa should be there that's what is fiery so now it is said very clearly that a devotee need not bother about all this vedeshu yagneshu tapasu chaiva daneshu yat punya phalam pradishtam atipi tat sarvam idam viditva yogim param sthanam upetyantyam bishma dev is simply respecting the norm he is respecting the Laws created by Krishna, but a devotee need not bother about anything. Oh, from which chakra am I supposed to leave? Which which hole should I leave this body? Will I leave from Sahasra Brahma Randra? It's day time, it's night time. Because it is said, if one doesn't follow these four conditions, then one goes to moon planet, enjoys for ten thousand years, and comes back. Whereas a devotee need not bother anything about all this. Because for a devotee, what happens? Deshamaham samudrata, mrityu samsara sagarat. ಭವಾಮಿಲ್ಸ್ಟಿಲ್ಸ್ಟಿಲ್ಸ್ಟಿಲ್ಸ್ಟಿಲ್ಸ್ಟಿಲ್ಸ್ಟಿಲ್
what exactly is spoken because that eighth chapter is about attaining the supreme how to attain the supreme is mentioned there so main thing is we'll quickly go through antakale cha mam eva smaran muktva kalevaram ya prayati samad bhavam yati nasti atra samshayah so at the time of death only krishna mam eva only me smaran you should remember muktva kalevaram when you are getting delivered from this body yes so such a person he attains the nature of krishna ya prayati he attains krishna's bhava that means spiritual nature of krishna yati nastri atra samshaya there is no doubt about it at the time of death okay what if you don't remember krishna at the time of death then whatever you remember yam yam api smaran bhavam tajatyante kalevaram tam tam eva iti kaunteya sada tad bhava bhavita then whatever you remember at death you will attain that destination acha aisi baat hai no i want to remember krishna only at the time of death so how can i assure that i'll remember krishna at the time of death then he says tasmat sarveshu kaleshu mam anusvara yudhya cha mai arpita mano buddhir mam e vaishyasya samshaya you have to start practicing right from now right now you are supposed to practice anusvara repeatedly think of krishna sarveshu kaleshu always because death can come at any point of time and if you practice something throughout life then we are able to attain the result at the death because life is preparation death is examination okay then how do i exactly do anusmaran of krishna that is mentioned in eighth verse because krishna is telling tasmat sarveshu kaleshu ma anusmara how to do anusmara yes abhyasa yoga yuktena chetasa nanya gamina paramam gopurusham divyam yati parthanu chintayan so you have to practice you have to practice so this vidhi which krishna teaches in 8 9 10 11 it goes on till almost 13 he teaches the vidhi of bhakti mishra yoga acharya has mentioned that is bhakti mishra yoga so you have to do yoga abhyas and chetasa na anya gamina it should not go your consciousness should not go anywhere else but you have to meditate on parama purusham divyam you have to meditate on that great personality yati parthanu chintayan so one thing we understand through this is this is an artificial process robad writes that also is very artificial it's not natural next so now you to if you want to meditate you need to have along with con- this concentration but along with concentration you need to have right conception also so conception is mentioned in the ninth verse kavim puranam anushasitaram anoraniyam samanusmaredya sarvasya dhataram achintya rupam aditya varanam tamasapparastad yes he is the most intelligent person kavim he is the oldest person anushasitaram he is the person who is the instructor anor aniyamsam he is smaller than the smallest like that you should remember anusmaredya aise smaran karna hai sarvasya dhataram he is the maintainer of everything achintya rupam his form is inconceivable aditya varanam tamasapparastad and he is as bright as the sun bright like sun tamasapparastad he destroys all the darkness so this is getting the right conception about krishna प्राणकाले मनसाचलेन भक्त्या युक्तो योग बलेन चैव भ्रुवोर मध्ये प्राण मावेश सम्यक सतम परम पुरुषम उपैति दिव्यम सो नाउ हियर इज अ प्रोसीजर इज मेंशन द प्रोसीजर इज हाउ वन इज सपोज योग बलेन विद योग बल मनसा आचलेन माइंड शुड नॉट मूव भक्त्या युक्तो दैट्स व्हाई इट्स कॉल्ड भक्ति मिश्र योग भक्ति इज आल्सो देयर लिटिल बिट बट मेनली इट इज योगिक प्रोसेस भ्रुवोर भ्रुवोर इज आईब्रोस मध्ये प्राणम सिचुएट योर फोकस एनर्जी प्राण हियर and avesha samya completely absorb in between eyebrows if you all try this you know what will happen first little headache will come then big headache will come and then neck pain will start then back pain will start the whole body will pain and eventually will quit <laughs> yeah so it is not for us <laughs> anyways coming back so here one thing we need to understand that uh, Bhishma Dev is not artificially remembering Krishna. He is naturally remembering Krishna. On the other hand, the procedure mentioned is artificial remembering. A yogi has to artificially remember. Why? Because he has no love for Krishna. Na? If somebody has love for Krishna, he will naturally remember Krishna. But person who doesn't have love for Krishna will, na, will artificially remember Krishna. Yes. So once uh, one devotee had gone for Barsana I camp, 
he was telling what is the difference between a sadaka and a rajwasi barsana wasi so he was seeing that the barsana wasis uh, after the right treatment they are sleeping but in between sleep also they are chanting krishna's name in between so he was telling the difference between barsana wasis and sadaka is that barsana wasis they chant even while sleeping and sadakas they sleep even when chanting <laughs> because for us love is krishna's love is not awakened he is not a lovable object for us so till the time krishna becomes the most lovable object his smaran will not be natural yogi artificially meditates on krishna bhishma is he is naturally meditating on krishna last shloka for today's discussion विशुद्धया धारणया हता शुभ तदीक्षवासुगत युद्ध श्राम निवृत्त सर्वेन्द्रिय वृत्ति विभ्रमस्तुष्टेशन लुकिंग एट लॉर्ड श्री कृष्ण ही एट वंस वॉज फ्रीड फ्रॉम ऑल मटेरियल इन ऑस्पेशियसनेस and was relieved of all bodily pains caused by the arrow wounds thus all the external activities of his senses at once stopped and he prayed transcendentally to the controller of all living beings while quitting his material body so this was a result of meditation that's mentioned here what was the result of bhishma dev's meditation that's mentioned in this verse so he started meditating and what was the result he obtained by the pure meditation on lord freed from inauspiciousness Freed from bodily pains, gone. No more bodily pain. This is fact. Even Rukmini Devi also says the same thing. Shrutva guna bhuvana sundarashun matamge nirvishya karana varai haratom natapam. As soon as I hear Krishna katha, shrutva guna, I hear the qualities of Krishna. What happens? Nirvishya karana varai harato angatapam. My all bodily di- discomfort, disease, all go away. As soon as I hear Krishna katha. so whenever next time somebody has some bodily pains etc we should immediately take shelter of krishna katha if it is not going we are not hearing properly <laughs> wish me immediately yes yes uh, whenever i am in pain i i am listening to kirtans amazing and also same yes. effect no problem there is katha kirtan guna kirtan nama kirtan shubhadev goswami will say in the second canto when you read second canto you will understand that nam kirtan is highest that is the best best kirtan is nam kirtan very nice we can keep hearing nam kirtan we become all right of course it doesn't mean we don't take medicines <laughs> we don't but uh, yes our shelter should be krishna holy name should be our shelter here we see that immediately his external senses at once stopped and he started offering prayers what prayers he offered that we'll see tomorrow but uh, the whole point is his pains bodily pains arrows wounds everything was gone by pure meditation on krishna that's something very amazing yes and why he could attain prabhupada writes in the purport why he could attain all this because lord's presence lord's presence brings all auspiciousness so lord is the controller and benefactor of all living entities in suhridam sarva bhutana and thus he provides all facilities so the whole past time is krishna facilitating the departure of the glorious departure of bhishma dev that we see here very amazingly is orchestrated this whole past time and now he has made him completely comfortable so that he can attain full absorption okay we'll pause here we'll officially end the class here anybody has any questions we can take yes roji i had a quick question yes please so in you when you were reading bhagavad gita 8 9 10 you said that this was not the natural process but uh, yeah. artificial process yes but we as sadhakas we are reading bhagavad gita also and bhagavatam also mm. so how should we take this part of the bhagavad gita because prabhupada explains all the purports from the pure devotional point of yes. view yes yes prabhupada so, applies the same thing to naam jap manasa chalena your mind should not waver when we chant no multitasking focusing only on hearing the holy name and all these things so we should take all these things from chanting point of view so prabhupad gives all explanation from that point of view because that is not yuga dharma right now krishna is mentioning from a satyuga perspective as yuga dharma but whatever is uh, contemporary yuga dharma prabhupad explains that that is the meaning of acharya 
Acharya is one who brings down the principles to practicality for all of us. So for us, it is yoga means jap, bhakti yoga. Thank you. And also, like, can we also say that when we are chanting, obviously we are trying, but ultimately is the Lord's mercy when it comes, then only we'll be absorbed. 100%. But we have to show our sincerity and Definitely. then depend on Krishna. Two first. fingers too short. Our endeavor, Lord's mercy. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else? Hare Krishna. I want to start by uh, Sir, Prabhuji, uh, once we, uh, means, uh, you can say, uh, Getting prema stage, one get to Vakunda, that is what you told. He reaches to the Sarva position. So my clarification is, suppose one reaches to Vakunda position, can it be elevated to Krishna Loka by his bhakti or he will remain in that Vakunda only? <laughs> As such, uh, <laughs> because we, we, are, we think everything from a materialistic point of view, we think that, oh, this fellow is Vakunda only. I'm going to go over in that But in spiritual world, everything is absolute. From Tatpa point of view, everything is absolute. Of course, from Rasa point of view, there is a difference. So whatever Rasa is natural for you, you will go there. So there is nothing wrong with Vaikuntha. We are in Bhuloka. We are in material world. Where is Vaikuntha? Far, far away. <laughs> so there is absolutely, uh, from Tatpa point of view, there is no difference between Vaikuntha, Goloka. Because ultimately, it's absolute. It's all the kingdom of God. But, what is the difference? The difference is in the intimacy of reciprocation with the Lord. Look at Narayana. I normally give this example. Give him a form. Please fill your form. What is your father's name? Narayana says, no father. Okay, mother's name. <laughs> oh, we nahi hai. Brother's name. No brother. Sister's name. No sister. On the other hand, Krishna, he will say, father's name. Ah, do do hai mere. I'll tell. <laughs> do do baap hai. Do do mummy hai. Bhai bhi hai. Behen bhi hai. Dher sare bhai hai. So Krishna has very personal reciprocation. So that intimate form of Lord is Krishna. Right? So from Rasa point of view, there is a difference. But uh, we shouldn't compare it from a materialistic point of view. Yeah. Thank you, Guru. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Very much. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Prabhuji, uh, in the starting, you have mentioned uh, one line, uh, but uh, I listen, I was listen another line. Uh, Aham Vetti, uh, uh, Shuko Vetti, Vyasa uh, Shuko Vetti, Parikshit Vetti Na Vetti Va, Sridharam Sakalam Vetti. Ah, Sridharam Sakalam Vetti, okay, okay, thank you. It's Parikshit? Yes, Parikshit Vetti Na Vetti. Sridharam Sakalam Vetti. Okay, thank you. Sridhar Swami knows everything. Bhavad Deepika. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. I've heard this one also. Okay. I've heard this from His Holiness Bhakti Rasam Maharaj. Yes. Prabhuji, um, first of all, thank you. Aapka health teak Mita still you took class for us. Very grateful to you. You please pray I can serve properly tomorrow. Uh, you mentioned uh, and we have heard also that Krishna took the role of uh, like washing the feet of everyone. Uh, so uh, how could Pandavas and other devotees uh, accept that? When we see in Vrindavan it's different like in Sakiras and like devotees do all kinds of things but uh, considering they are how could Pandavas accept take Krishna taking that role? To show that how Krishna is near Hankrite. He doesn't have any faults. So they wanted to glorify the position of Lord. So devotee behaves in such a way, he may act sometimes in such a way which will bring out the glories of Lord in a more uh, amazing manner. Yes. So ultimately, Lord's glory increased, right? Through this. So that's how Krishna inspired the devotees to behave like that. Okay. Last one I'll take from Yashika Mataji. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Dhanat Pranam. Prabhuji, how to see every situation in a spiritual way actually sometimes we materialize things or uh, um, yes when we understand and realize this fact that krishna is sarva karana karana when we realize this fact with practice of sadhana that ultimately everything every situation is offered to me by krishna then we will be able to see everything uh, very nicely so it is krishna who has given me this favorable situation to grow in bhakti it is Krishna has given me this unfavorable situation to grow in bhakti. In either case, Krishna wants me to grow in bhakti. So favorable, unfavorable, apparently. 
but i'll still grow in bhakti because it's krishna's name okay we'll close here hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare i want to again beg forgiveness for my lack of energy levels i was really 